Hello, I'm Dr. Hafsa. Today, our focus will be on grasping the fundamental concepts of genetic disorders, including their modes of inheritance. Before we go into the details of the modes of inheritance, I'd like you to have a solid understanding of these definitions. Chromosomes are self-replicating structures that contain cellular DNA that bears in its nucleotide sequence the linear array of genes. Let's understand this with the help of this diagram. This X-shaped structure right here is the chromosome. Inside this is the supercoiled DNA. This DNA is made up of these four bases, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thiamine. And this area right here is the functional part of the DNA or the part of the DNA that encodes for a specific protein. This is known as the gene. This gene is located in a specific area on the chromosome and this area is known as the locus of that particular gene. To understand the concept of alleles, let's suppose that this is the allele for the hair color. If this is black and this over here is brown, so basically the alleles are alternative forms of gene found at the same locus as we discussed, the same area, but they're on different sister chromatids. And at the time of division, when this chromosome is divided and separated, the sister chromatids are pulled apart. So each allele is inherited separately from each parent. Now, what is a karyotype? A karyotype is the number and appearance of chromosomes in the nucleus. In human, there are 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosome. This pair decides whether the baby will be a girl or a boy. Autosomes are any chromosomes other than the sex chromosomes. Think of with autosomal dominant inheritance in which all offsprings of an affected person will have 50% chance of inheriting the mutation. Only one copy or allele of the autosomal gene is needed for the disease to manifest. Both male and female children will be affected and only the affected individuals can pass on the disease. Normally, it appears in every generation. Here, the father has one mutated or affected gene and this results in 50% of his offsprings being affected, whereas the other 50 are unaffected. Let's learn it with another example. For instance, both parents are affected with the disease and I'm marking it with XD. Their offsprings will be heterozygotes, homozygotes and normal. Let's change the color so that it's easier for you to understand. Here, there is an interesting concept. This right here is the homozygote for the disease because he has two, sorry, she has two genes that are mutated, whereas these two offsprings will be heterozygotes because only one of their genes is mutated. This right here will be the normal offspring. And this leads us to a 75% probability of the offsprings being affected, whereas 25% will be normal. The risk remains the same for each pregnancy. And some examples include achondroplasia, adult polycystic kidney disease, HHT, von Willebrand disease, neurofibromatosis, and so on. In autosomal recessive inheritance, only homozygotes are affected. Both males and females are equally affected, and it may skip a generation, which means that an affected parent is not necessarily going to produce an affected offspring. In this case, both the parents are carriers, which means that they have one mutated gene and their offsprings will be, 25% of them will be unaffected, 50% will be carriers and 25% will be affected. Here's another example. 
in which one parent is homozygous for the disease whereas the other one is unaffected now in this case all of their children will be carriers i'm changing the color as we can see over here all the offsprings have one mutated gene which means that all of them are carriers and for an autosomal recessive disorder to manifest two mutated genes are needed here are some examples of relatively common diseases and i have written them in this way for you to memorize them easily a for albinism b beta thalassemia c cystic fibrosis d deafness e emphysema and so on moving on let's learn the x linked dominant inheritance we already know that females have two x chromosomes whereas males have one x and one y chromosome so if a child has inherited the mutated x chromosome even from one parent they will manifest the disease so a woman with the x linked dominant disorder has a 50% chance of having an affected daughter or son with each pregnancy as shown over here the mother has only one affected or mutated gene and this results in 50% of her children being affected and the remaining 50% are healthy so we learn that only one gene mutated gene is needed for the disease to manifest in the cases of x linked dominant inheritance whereas if the father has the disease i'm marking it as xd and if the mother is completely normal let's learn how the offsprings will be i'm changing the color so in this we learn that both the daughters will be affected by the condition whereas the sons will be spared because the father passes on the y chromosome to his sons some examples of x linked dominant disorders are vitamin d resistant rickets alport syndrome and red syndrome in x linked recessive inheritance only males are affected because two mutated genes are needed for the disease to manifest but in the cases of turner syndrome where there is only one x chromosome 45x not this x chromosome if this is mutated the disease will manifest in x linked disorders recessive disorders male to male transmission is not seen because the male or the father only transmits the y chromosome to his son and as seen over here the father is sick because he has only one chromosome and that chromosome unfortunately is mutated whereas the mother is a carrier because she has only one mutated x chromosome but the other x chromosome is normal this results in 25% of her daughters being carriers whereas the other 25% will be sick whereas the sons will be either sick or healthy there is no carrier state in the sons let's learn it with another example for instance the father is sick or affected whereas the mother is completely normal now what will happen is i'm changing the color again this will result in all the daughters being carriers and all the males being healthy and why because the daughters have only one mutated gene whereas the sons are completely normal with no mutated gene
I hope this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.